Hi everyone, Jane from Pandemonium Art Gallery here, and today we are going to talk about some basic brush techniques. Now in a lot of my videos I try and show you tips and tricks to help you use a brush effectively, and there's a lot of different types of brushes out there that you can use, but I pretty much have three basic brushes that I use on almost every painting. And so those are the brushes that we're going to focus on today. The first brush we're going to talk about is the background brush. And then we're going to talk about the angle brush. And then we're going to move on to a round brush. We're not going to be making an actual painting today, just showing you some brush techniques. Now when painting a background, you want to use a larger brush so that you can have more control over the drying time of the paint and you can get it covered a little bit quicker. And when you're covering a background, it's important that you want this brush to be wet. And the reason for that is the water in the brush helps the paint spread smoother and it helps it go farther. If you're working in small detailed areas and you want thicker, heavier paint, then you can work with a dry brush. But to cover a background, you typically want your brush to be wet. So I've got my jar of water here and I'm gonna put the brush in it and I'm gonna swish it around until the brush is fully wet. Now when I take this brush out of the water, you can see the water dripping off of it. We don't want it quite that wet because we're gonna lose control of our paint. We'll have paint and water running all over the place. But we don't wanna wipe it off on a paper towel because that will take out too much of the moisture. So what I'm gonna do is just wipe it once on each side of the brush on the edge of the jar just to make sure that the big drips are gone. And now there's no water dripping out of it, but it's still pretty damp. Now to cover a background, you don't wanna come into your paint and do just little bits like this. You're not gonna, it's, that's not gonna cover very much. See how transparent that is? It almost looks more like watercolor. Now if you're going for a watercolor effect, you can certainly do that. But if you want your paint to be more solid, you want to get a lot more paint. And the way we're going to do that is by smashing it in the paint. See how I'm just getting in there? Lots and lots of paint on both sides of the brush. Now I'm going to talk about two different ways to use this. When you're painting a background, especially if you're using more than one color, which I'm going to be doing, there's, there's two ways to use the brush. First, we're going to use it flat on both sides and that's gonna help lay the paint down and spread it around. And you'll notice I'm not gonna go like this, I've been using both sides of the brush. The second technique we're gonna talk about is how to smooth paint out or blend two colors together. And with that, we're gonna use just the end of the brush with a little bit of pressure and that's gonna help smooth two colors together. So I've got my paint loaded up on my brush and to lay this paint down, I'm gonna start right about here and I'm gonna press flat. And see how thick and heavy it's laying that paint down? So I'm just gonna keep working both sides back and forth. And then notice I'm not scattering this all over the place. It's very controlled, so I'm not moving on from one spot until that spot is completely covered. Then I move on. And if you start getting these fuzzy spots here, that means that your brush is either a little too dry or it needs more paint. In this case, it's both. And I'm gonna wet my brush again. So I've got my jar of water. I'm not fully submerging this brush in the water and, and washing it off. I'm just touching the very tip of the brush to the very tip of the water. And then notice I didn't wipe it off on the edge of the jar after. Now I'm gonna get more paint. I'm gonna get this um, primary red color. And no, I did not wash off my brush. I tend to be a messy painter like that. So I have another color, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna use the brush flat on both sides. And if I keep using the brush flat on both sides, I keep laying down paint. Now right here where those two colors meet, I'm gonna use the end of the brush like I was telling you. See, my brush is barely bending. But when I go over top of those colors, that smooths them out and blends them in. And if I decide I wanna take that pink up a little higher, 
See, I pushed a little harder and I got more of the colors that were on my brush. And now I've got a much smoother blend. Push a little harder, get a little more of that off. Just using the very tip of the brush to blend those colors together. And now I have a really smooth blend. So now I'm gonna show you the proper way to clean a brush. I've got my brush here with paint on it. And one thing I see a lot of people do when they are not familiar with cleaning brushes is they put it in the water and then they stab it. They stab it on the bottom of the jar. Eventually that will clean your brush. But what it's also gonna do is destroy your brush. So when you're stabbing it on the bottom of the jar, see what's happening. See how it's bending in all these different directions. And eventually it's gonna fray your brush so it loses its shape. It's gonna break some bristles eventually, and it's just gonna destroy the brush. What I always tell people to do is to pretend that the bottom of the jar is dirty and that your goal is to clean the bottom of the jar. See how I've got my brush sitting right at the bottom? So I'm gonna pretend that the bottom of this jar is coated in a thin, a very thin film of paint that is easy to clean off. And I'm just gonna swish my brush back and forth all across the entire bottom of the jar. And when it comes out, it's nice and clean. You can check by wiping it on the edge of the jar. And if you have a lot of color come out, you may need to do it again. Now what you're gonna do is reshape it on the edge of the jar. I'm gonna take a paper towel and I'm gonna dry off the handle and this metal part here. I can never remember what it's called. I'm not gonna pretend like I know what it's called to sound impressive. I have no idea what it's called. If you know what it's called, you can leave me a comment below and tell me. And then I'm gonna reshape it on my paper towel. Make sure that it's flat and that all of the bristles are pressed back together nice and smooth. Next, we're gonna talk about the angle brush. And the angle brush is one that can be a little bit intimidating for people if they've never used it before. So we're gonna spend a little bit of time on this brush. Um, I'm pretty new to angle brushes. I've been using them for a few months now. And before that, I didn't understand why an angle brush was important. Um, and I was, I was intimidated by it, honestly. And then as soon as I started using one, I realized that this is the brush that I had been looking for forever. And it's my favorite brush now. I use the angle brush on probably every single painting that I do. So like the background brush, we wanna use this one wet. We're not gonna use it dry. So I'm gonna put it in the water. And once it's wet, again, I'm just gonna brush off a little bit of the water. I do actually want to use this brush a little wetter than I use the background brush. And the reason for that is when you're drawing with an angle brush, you typically want really crisp, smooth lines and a little bit of extra water helps you get that. So I only wiped off one little drip of water. I'm gonna use some white paint here and show you a few different line techniques with this brush because it's really, it's a really versatile brush to you. To load this brush up, I'm not gonna get quite as crazy as I did with the background brush there and get gobs of paint on it. I am gonna kind of pull the paint out on both sides. I'm making sure to keep this brush nice and flat with a really crisp edge. Okay, so with this brush, we can do a couple of things now that I have it loaded with paint. We can use it flat and make a nice wide line if you're using it flat, you can use it the same way as the background brush. Press flat to lay down color and use the end very lightly, just the end of the brush to blend those colors in. See, very, very little pressure, just the very tip of the brush. And I can get a little bit of blending. Press harder again to lay more color down. When you go back for more paint, dip it in the water let the drip fall off, but I'm not gonna wipe it off. I'm gonna bring that extra drip of water over here and mix in. And because my water is blue, you can see how much water to paint is getting mixed. I'm gonna show you how to and how not to draw lines with this brush. 
The important thing when you're drawing lines with the angle brush is that that long tip always drags. Always, always drags. It doesn't matter what direction you're going in. So here's how not to draw a line. You don't wanna crush up into. See how that tip bent and it got crushed? And I lose control of my line. It also deposits quite a bit of paint at the head of the line so the paint doesn't go quite as far. And now I'm gonna draw a line again. And to draw a line, you can use the entire, the entire portion of the chisel edge, like that. Or you can just use the very fine tip. So with this brush, you can get a nice thin line. And if you push harder, you can get a fat line. Same brush. I load it up with a little more paint. Now let me show you a couple other things. If you get to the point where you can easily control your pressure, then you can start to do things like this, where you start with a very thin line. And as you go, you slowly add more and more pressure. And then end with a thin line again. Let's do that one more time. So we're gonna start here with a very thin line and we're gonna push a little harder and end with a thin line again. And that's just all pressure and practice. So this is really helpful when you're painting trees. You know, if, if you've got a branch like that and you want to widen it at the bottom and make it skinnier at the end, it's easier for me anyway to do it in one brush stroke. So I'm gonna start here at the bottom and I'm gonna push hard and as I go, I'm gonna slowly start to lighten my pressure. And I can do another one off of it. So again, that takes practice. So I want you to practice with all of these techniques just get a canvas like this. It doesn't matter what colors of paint you get. Just a couple colors of paint that will show up against each other and practice this. Just get a brush and practice doing just the tip of it like that. You know, if you have to put your hand on the canvas, that's okay. Just practice all of the different variations. And now we're gonna clean this brush and we're gonna do it the same way. I'm setting it in there letting it sit on the bottom of the jar, and then I'm just gonna swish it. Without the excess on the edge of the jar, make sure that there's not a lot of paint running back out of it. And then we're gonna reshape it again. So I have my paper towel drying off the brush, not the bristles necessarily, just drying off the drips off of the brush part itself. And I'm gonna wipe it, make sure that those bristles are smooth, that it's not bent, and that they are pressed back together in that sharp chisel edge. Let me show you why this is so important. This is my personal brush. I use this brush a lot. Probably my most used brush next to my background brush. This is a brush that gets used at my paint parties. It gets abused, and to be honest, when I clean it afterwards, I don't put quite as much effort into keeping it nice as I do as I do mine. So the difference is obvious. This one, you can see it's very fuzzy. The bristles are kind of puffed out. So when I'm painting for myself, I clean off my brush, reshape it, and set it aside after I'm done using it throughout the entire time. I don't leave my brushes sitting in the water. I know a lot of artists will leave their brushes in the water as they work, but that will eventually deform the tip of the brush where it's sitting on the bottom of the jar, it will start to get a bend. And once it's got that bend, it's almost impossible to get rid of. Um, another thing that happens is the water soaks in under this metal part, remember that I don't know what it's called, and it will loosen the glue, or if the handle is wood, it will warp the wood, um, make it split, and then your brush will come apart, the bristles can fall out. All right, there's one more brush we're gonna talk about, and that is the round brush. Now, what I'm gonna show you with the round brush is the same, whether it's a brush this size, or a much larger brush, 
or like this teeny size zero. So the important thing with this brush is that it's round and it has a point at the top for a reason. So we wanna make sure that it stays in that shape. So I'm gonna put it in my water and get it wet. Now, if I wipe it on the edge of the jar like the other ones, I've kind of flattened it out. What I'm gonna do instead is kind of, that just shakes off the extra drips and look, it's still perfectly round and pointed. And again, like with the angle brush, how I used a little bit of extra water so that my paint would flow, it's the same thing here. And when I just click it off on the edge of the jar like that, it just shakes off the extra drips. There's still a good amount of water in my brush. Now when I come to get my paint, again, if I smash it in there, like with the flat brushes, I'm gonna deform this shape. So what I'm gonna do is bring out a little bit of paint and I'm rolling my brush as, as I'm dipping it in there. And before I pick it up, I'm gonna roll it one more time so that it keeps that nice round shape. I'm actually gonna use a little bit of black. And I've got a little drip of water in here. Actually, it's rolling down my brush now. So I'm gonna pull some black out and mix that water into it. And remember, that's gonna help us get a nice crisp line. See how I'm rolling the brush as I go? That's helping to keep it in that nice pointed shape. Okay, so my brush is pointed. And it's very similar to the angle brush. So if I put very little pressure, I can get a nice, thin, crisp line. If I put more pressure, I can get a much fatter line. And you can do the combinations of those. So let's do it over here. I'm gonna go very thin to fatter to thin. And that's all just in the pressure that I'm putting on the brush. Notice also that I am putting my hand on the canvas. That helps me with my pressure. So if I have my arm just hanging out up here and I try and get this super thin line, I might be able to do it because I practice at it a lot. But it's, it's a lot harder for me. I have to really focus. But if I put my hand on the canvas and let the whole side of my hand brace me. See how I've got clear to my pinky, hand on the canvas. So I can go. And see that was just all in the tips of my fingers. And I can do the, the pressure like that too. Very, very thin, wider, much thinner. And we're gonna clean this brush off again, same way. it off again make sure the shape is nice and round dry off the brush and shape it on your paper towel and that's going to keep that brush shaped nice and sharp for you for a long time I know some artists do use a little bit of hairspray when they're when they're completely finished with their brush um, and that is to make sure that the bristles don't start to puff out as it dries I don't do that um, I would imagine that the alcohol in the hairspray would dry the brushes out too much and make them brittle, but I know a lot of people do that. So if that's something you wanna try, if you're having an issue, um, go ahead and try it. I would say that if you have a brush that's kind of puffed out, like this one that I showed you, you could definitely try that. Try some hairspray and see if that's gonna, if it helps you bring the brush back to back to the way it needed to be. But if not, just let it be puffed out mess and buy yourself a new one. There's always uses for brushes. I never throw brushes away. So I'll probably find a use for this brush and continue to use it even though it's puffed out. I just won't be able to use it to get these fine little lines. But maybe I'll use it for clouds or grasses or something where I want a little bit more of a scattered effect. So thanks for watching everyone. I hope you learned a few tips about brush handling, how much water to use, how to load different types of paintbrushes, 
how to clean them and how to store them so that they're not ruined. Please feel free to leave me a comment or email me, message me on Facebook and let me know if there's any videos or tips or tricks that you'd like to see and I'll see what I can do for you. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you next time.